Hey everybody, I'm Robin Dean for The Writing Obsession, and today's kind of a special day for the website. We just received our very first product review submission, Vogelites. Vogelites alert drivers behind you to your rate of deceleration, whether you are engine braking, downshifting, or using brake levers. It started out as a Kickstarter campaign that quickly grew and succeeded to surpass their final pledge goal of $50,000. Fazail Ali is their co-founder and CEO at Vector Labs LLC. He's the one that sent us a product. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, you can find out more about that product at vololights.com. That's V-O-L-O-L-I-G-H-T-S dot com. Let's check them out. All right. Got my package here. Gently. Gently. And there it is. As it says, advanced braking indication. Make other drivers better drivers. Well, we can only hope, but I like the concept. There's really not much to it from what I can tell. I right, see we have a magnet. Keep that in place right there. We got two, uh, yes, wire connectors right there. Installation instructions. Check out our installation website that includes the latest videos, tips, and tricks for a smooth installation of your product at www.followlights.com forward slash install slash instructions. One, loosen four black screws on back to remove front cover. Four black screws on back. All right, well, this one. All right. Doesn't say remove. And I'm not sure that I understand how it would come off if I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and remove four black screws. Magnets. Very good thing to have. Two. Slide license plate from left to right. So now they say remove the front cover, I suppose. All right. Okay, so we're going to install this left to right. So the best I could, I cleaned up my license plate. It has a little bit of a sticker here from Wisconsin Camping. And they want me to slide the license plate from left to right following upper guides until plate stops on right-hand guide. Then replace the top cover and screws. This must be the guide right here. Right there's your guide. So take this and you slip it in right there. I'm going to say over top of the circuitry. Hmm. A little snug, huh? Oh, I see how you are. All right, so it's intended to be pretty snug, so you want to press down on this circuit strip to make sure you don't cause any troubles and wash your thumbs. I'm going to say that's something for concern in terms of people getting a new product and then instantly breaking it, but otherwise concept seems sound. And there we have it. All right, so that's on the guide. And now I am to place the cover, place the screws, all right, plate is in place. Step four, power Vololites with 12D VDC from license plate illumination or other source. Do not power from the brake light. Red is positive, black is negative. Okay, so again, power the Vololites from a 12 volt DC from the license plate illumination or other source. Do not power from the brake light. So we don't want this to be connected to something that is on off based on a pedal or a lever position. So as you can see here, I've got it reinstalled and it pretty much goes on just like a normal license plate would. The only difference being that it has the bracket around it now, which is wired up and ready to be connected to the electrical system. I went ahead and read through the rest of the instructions and was pretty impressed with the simplicity of the process, assuming that it does work. We'll find that out soon enough. Their instructions plainly state that in order to calibrate it, it needs to be disconnected from the mounting hardware. However, I'm up against a wall about how I want to go about wiring in this system. What they've included in the box are posi taps, which are a great connection method 
except that I already have a relay system for auxiliary power ports installed on my Bandit 1200. So being as though I still have one port open on that auxiliary relay system, I'm thinking I might like to use that instead. Either way, whatever I decide, after I get the wiring set up, I'll have to disconnect the bracket again so that I can calibrate it. Alright, so as you can see here, I've actually gone with my relay system as a connecting point. I've fastened two wires, soldered two wires in the, uh, at the PosiTap connector point, removing the PosiTap connectors that they included, and I created these two connections that are going to plug directly into my relay system. Looks more complicated than it would be for anybody else. All you need to do is find a working running light that is constantly on when the bike is running, and that's all you PosiTap into, as per the instructions. At this point, my curiosity about the product has peaked, and so much so that I was emailing the manufacturers regarding any information I could get about how it operates. My imagination ran wild with the concept that maybe there was some sort of voltage detection or amperage meter that would detect when certain things in the stator was shifting, blah, blah, blah. But that's not how it works at all. Effectively, somewhere in this design is the equivalent of some form of digital level. It detects when there is downforce in the bike. I don't know if it's through fluid, I don't know if it's through circuitry. Either way, the very concept is intriguing. And as intelligent as my remarks attempt to be, I couldn't resist just going ahead and turning on the bike without calibrating it first, just to see if I could figure it out for myself. Here's what I discovered. Pretty lights kick things off, and remember this is not calibrated yet. If I tap my rear fender, brakes, a bump. So sensitivity is definitely something we want to fine tune for whichever bike we're riding. And that's what we're going to do next, starting with calibration. The instructions say to turn the ignition on, but without starting and confirm the Vololite startup sequence with two sets of flashes, which we just saw before. Then, after I remove it from the mounting hardware, we're going to tilt the Vololites from vertical position until you see both types of urgency indicators alternating in flash. Then we're looking for a quicker double flash, where they then say we can trim wires to fit and install Vololites on the motorcycle bracket using bolts previously used to hold license plate, Bolts are not included. I will say that from what I see, they could provide a little bit more wire. That ensures that people will be able to connect them to whichever part of the bike they want. In my case, a relay system that's a little bit further down the wheelbase. So, next item up for bid, we're going to disconnect the Volo lights. And per the instructions, we'll turn the ignition switch to on without starting the bike. And we turn this vertically until we get two flashing... Oh, there we go. And install. The next step in the instructions says that it's time to calibrate. And the first thing it tells me to do is turn the key to the on position. So I went ahead and turned the bike off, assuming that maybe that was part of the instructions as well. The instructions say to move the motorcycle to a smooth and level driveway, leaning the motorcycle off of the side stand to an upright position. There's a diagram here that says you're supposed to use two people, one to hold the bike in an upright position and the other to do the calibration. That you're not supposed to use a side stand and that you're not supposed to use a center stand. In my case, I've replaced my stock suspension with that of a Hayabusa. As a result, I can still use my center stand, but my rear tire is millimeters off the ground. So I'm going to do this myself with the bike on the center stand. For those of you without such luxury, go get a six pack of your favorite sodas, have a buddy over, get to it. To start the calibration process, I'm supposed to touch the included magnet to the area on the lower left of the lens, then remove the magnet immediately after its first flash. So I take this magnet right here, touch there, pull it away. Then I let it go through the cycle for 15 seconds. And according to the documentation, I'm now fully calibrated. The instructions then mention switching modes. There are multiple sensitivities. Touring is the most sensitive, which is good for large touring motorcycles or those with automatic transmissions. Default or standard setting works for many installations. And then there's Sport, which is the least sensitive, good for motorcycles with lower gearing or for more aggressive riding. 
I tend to be a pretty aggressive writer, but I don't know enough about the product to know how its sensitivities really operate. So I'm going to set it to default for now. It says here that in order to change the different sensitivities, I'm to hold the magnet through the following number of flashes. One is for calibration. Two is for touring. Three is for default. Four is for sport. And five toggles between flash and steady modes. Meaning when I do break, it will either modulate or not modulate. So there's a numeric count system for the use of the magnet. If I introduce the magnet once, it's going to calibrate the unit. If I introduce the magnet and hold it in place, then it's going to switch to touring sensitivity, and once it's removed, I'll get a single flash to confirm. Hold it longer, and I'll end up with default sensitivity, confirmed with two flashes. And lastly, if I hold it any longer than that, I end up in sport mode, confirmed with three flashes. Any further than that, and I'm toggling between modulating and non-modulating brake alert modes. Let's see how she works. I want default mode. I think that would mean, yes, okay, so now I'm in touring sensitivity. Great, the two flashes mean that I'm in default sensitivity. Let's see how sensitive that is. Not a bad start to get everything installed, and it seems simple enough to operate. Now it's just a matter of taking it out on the road and testing things out. So all right, we just completed our test run. I'm gonna go check out the video and we'll see what we see. The footage tells me that this product works. It does in fact introduce enhanced visibility for greater safety. It can be fine tuned for personal preference. A couple of things I would like to see, for example, longer wire. And for those of you who find that the bracket actually touches the fender, it might be nice to have vinyl washers to separate it from the bracket itself a little bit, provide some distance. It'd also be nice to see a pre-molded geometric slot where the magnet is supposed to go. For me, the magnet didn't always play nice, and sometimes the unit would recalibrate. As a result, you might see some extra blinking that wouldn't otherwise occur. Are they worth the $130 asking price? Maybe, maybe not. I'm leaning towards yes, because when you consider all of its features, a lightweight, durable design that looks good on any bike, all while ridding us of a known problem with the act of engine braking in an effort to increase visibility for riders, drivers behind us. Safety first, folks. Support their cause. Spend the dough. For the Riding Obsession, I'm Robin Dean. Safe travels, everyone.